dot current so that gets the current package um, and then to get the family name you go dot ID uh, dot family name so this will return the family name uh, to to you for this app um, this is just for debug purposes because um, uh, if you submit it to the store you'll know what the package family name is but after you submit it to the store it changes what you have in debug so we haven't got the store open at the moment so we want to just find out what the package family name is for this so uh, let's uh, actually run this directly in the debugger on the phone so it just goes straight to its main page uh, but the important thing is as it loads and runs we should have in our uh, output window there is the package family name that it's written to it so I'm just going to copy that and now we've got that bit of information so now we can go and modify our, uh, our client app and in the launcher logic uh, before we launch it I'm going to uh, new up um, a uh, a launcher options so we go var options is equal to a new launcher options and it doesn't know what that object is we need to resolve it so that's a uh, windows.system.launcher options and in that I'm going to set the uh, the um, target application package family name is equal to the string um, and in that I'm going to paste in that that uh, long string that we got quite ugly because this is a, just in debug if you once you submit it to the store you actually get quite a nice uh, friendly looking name and then when we launch our uh, actually do the launch instead of just using this generic one I'm going to actually insert that uh, that use one of the overrides of that which is to include that options in the launch so now when I run run this uh, client application uh, the app will start up and we'll hit the button and uh, if all goes well we should go directly to the first protocol handler so we bypass that disambiguation uh, dialogue and uh, you can see how uh, how that all works out that's a great demo it really is straightforward to use I can see a lot of applications and that can really uh, leverage that as well it's yep. nice that it's nice. secure now. nice and simple yeah so taking this on a little bit the next stage uh, just look a little bit more at launch for results which is uh, it's kind of the for for interactive apps this is this is the the great a really great uh, technology that we can use and it allows you as an app developer to create an experience that will uh, uh, it possibly extend across multiple apps so you can have one uh, app launching another app could launch another one and create an integrated yeah. experiences uh, each of the apps that are in the chain have their own little UI kind of a little bit of the transaction to handle um, and the idea is that they can cooperate with each other and then finally uh, a result will get passed back to the original caller so this was the thing where we were talking about that was kind of you could kind of do it with a bit of a kludge in 8.1 in that you could have a one app would launch another one uh, and there was no way for the uh, the called app to directly respond back to the uh, the callee and say hey well yeah we, I've done it and the result was whatever so you could do it kind of having back to back URI activation it was so but, unreliable it was oh, a kludge yeah. it was a it kludge it really was yeah. this is really so this uh, is, the this right is and proper way the right way to do it so this is a, a been a big ask for people so you have launch URI for results async, same, same thing as we saw before in terms of setting the target application package family name. So you're saying I want to specifically send this to uh, this other app, specifically that one. Um, but then below the blue lines there, we've actually got the, uh, the, res uh, the result, how the result is sent back. So uh, we're again using this value set uh, object. Uh, and then we have a, um, a protocol for results operation you call a report completed mm. uh, 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 method and pass a result data. And uh, do you put a capital A at the end of that? <laughs> I, I don't actually know what that capital A is doing. <laughs> Ignore the A. You didn't see the A. Okay, so wait, I think I understand though. So uh, the client 
invokes it yeah. specifically by family name to make sure it's not another one. And maybe it's something like a, an authentication piece, right? Or something like that. It does all the work, passes it back to the client. Yep. The client then has not only the result, but also can trust the result because it exactly. activated the, the app that it expected. So, so a good example of this was actually Facebook Auth. Mm. So yeah, so we had to do uh, in, in 8.1, we had uh, a, this a protocol for uh, apps to authenticate with Facebook, which is FB Auth colon. Uh, yeah. So, so that is the way that uh, the app would in invoke Facebook and try and do the protocol piece. But then we had to have uh, the calling app had to register for another protocol, which I don't remember what it is, yeah. for Facebook to then call it back. So this was, again, this back-to-back, -back, this mirroring thing. Right. But we also had to put some stuff, special stuff into the store to stop any other apps being deployed into the store using FB Auth. Because uh, we yeah. couldn't, you know, we couldn't allow anybody else to pretend to be uh, like Facebook. It could be some other, you know, we don't want a, 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 a malicious app that's pretending to. Well, be. that's just not a scalable solution because scalable you can't solution. do that over and over again. No. This you can. This is the answer. Yeah, yes. very elegant. Yeah. Very elegant. So I'm just going to show you a demo now, and we can look at a little bit more about how it works. Great. Right. Let's just. I'm going to. I'm going to walk through this uh, this example with you now. Um, this is a solution containing two projects. Uh, this one, which is the uh, the app that will be, will be launched, and this one, which is the launcher, the one that will be the client, if you like. So this is the main page of that one. It's just a simple uh, simulation of a, a shopping experience. The actual checkout experience is handled by this. I'm just going to deploy this to my uh, my phone. And uh, you'll see here, there it actually puts the, that's the package family name. We will need that uh, later on. So that's the package family name for the, uh, the actual checkout app. Now I'm going to run the shop app and I've set a breakpoint in it so we can just step through the code that actually makes the call to the other one. So here's my storefront. Um, I'm going to buy a widget today and uh, a sprocket. So let's go and hit checkout. Right here we are now in the uh, in the checkout function that's going to handle this. First of all, the uh, URI for the target app. So that target app has got a URI association declared in its package manifest for checkout demo uh, as the URI scheme. And then stepping through this, you set the launcher options. This is where that uh, target package family name of the of the target app is uh, specified. Uh, then we specify a. Uh, Let's just move this down, specify a, a transaction ID, and we're going to build a value set, which is the data that we're going to pass to the uh, uh, to the client. So we um, serialize to JSON, because a value set's a fairly simple-minded thing. It's a string dictionary, uh, string object dictionary, but everything you put into the object must be serializable. So um, our object is too complex, our collection is too complicated of uh, our the selected items that I've just chosen to buy. So we, we serialize Realize that uh, into a string into J into JSON, and then we uh, put that value into our input data value set, and also a transaction ID, which is that GUID. And then and this is where we use the new launch URI for results async, where we're specifying that checkout app URI. The uh, this is that was the URI uh, scheme for the target. This guy here, checkout demo. Um, and the option, so we're going to specify that we only launch the uh, the particular app with that package family name, and we pass in our value set of input data. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, when we when we come back from that, uh, if we've got a success, we'll navigate to the receipt page in here. So I'm now just going to let this run. So we'll navigate to the target. This is the page that's in the checkout app. This is the target app. So we now we've switched to a whole new app. Um, I'm just going to cancel it in here. We're back now in the original app, and we are on the receipt page because we've navigated to that page. Uh, but it says correctly that we've payment failed and we cancelled. Uh, so we can go back um, now. I'm going to go back, but I'm actually going to cancel this, and then we're going to debug the uh, the receiving side of this. So to do that, I need to uh, change how I do this. So we'll go into this is the checkout thing. Uh, this is that um, make payment page that you saw. And you could do if you could show it. it doesn't want to show it. Doesn't matter. Um, 
and we go to properties now I've got this do not launch but debug my code checked here so if you check that and then debug this which is what I'm going to do now I'm going to right click it and debug start new instance so now this app is going to the debugger starts up uh, but nothing happens because it's waiting to be activated in some way so in order to activate it I'm going to run and I could run up another copy of Visual Studio but in this case I'm directly going to run the client app the shop one so this time I'm going to buy myself a contraption and a gizmo and then hit checkout and at this point ah oh, because I didn't set any hang on I didn't set any breakpoints that's why we that nothing happened there so let's just go um, back to my uh, uh, to here and set a breakpoint in in the logic right and then back to where we were and let's uh, let's buy ourselves a contraption check out and now we're going to hit that breakpoint so now we're going to step through the code on the on the receiving side on the launched app so uh, we get our value set that we we've been passed in uh, we can get the caller the package family name of the caller so uh, we can do some maybe you can whitelist the approved callers so you can do some kind of uh, um, some kind of validation there you could set up your own thing using certificates uh, but we've got just simple validation here and then we we dig around in that value set and extract from it the data that we're interested in uh, it's not the prettiest code as the comment suggests there um, so we get the transaction ID out we get out the list of items and we we deserialize the JSON into a list of items so the items now has one item in it which is that contraption which is the item that I've chosen to buy in the source app uh, and then uh, we calculate the price um, and that's the logic uh, we, we we're good so we can let that run and now we are we're in this so you can now choose the payment cards all this is being handled by the, the this uh, called app and then I can choose to make the payment which is this guy down here make the payment and now we're going to build our response a new value set which is going to send back to the call the client uh, in for the result of this so this is the whole new stuff that we never could do in 8.1 we're building another value set putting some data into it um, we're we're just sending back the last four digits of the card that was used to to make that payment this obviously is a simulation uh, and then we put an auth code in and then we call the report completed method and this is the point at which we will return control to the caller so let that run and now we have navigated and we got back to the call and we've navigated to the receipt this time we've got our payment successful so there you can see you got a nice example of um, the end-to-end -end, uh, data flow between uh, between two apps using launch for results all right yep that seems pretty easy too That's I'm glad we have that now in our toolkit yep and there's one last thing in this on this topic of app-to-app -app communication yeah very short little topic uh, but another nice uh, nice kind of feature uh, particular again for um, enterprises if you like so with this idea that apps from the same publisher now we kind of have this concept of a file share almost ah. on on devices so oh so we always had a, f a a folder that was dedicated to the app but now two apps for the same publisher they have the same, a higher level folder the that they folder. share between them that's right that's lovely amazing. yeah no, this is cool um, very simple and easy to use. So um, if you want to use the publisher's shared storage folder, you simply have to declare it in your package.apex manifest. Um, it looks like this, extension category windows.publisher cache folder. And inside that, you have to specify one or more subfolder. If you don't, there's no folder for you. You have to specify yeah, a folder. Yeah, because we cannot read and write files from the, the root, if you like. So you have to be, there has to be a folder in there. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to write any code to kind of create these things. They are automatically set up when you, when you need them. They're automatically provisioned for you. So just name it, you can use it. And the way you use it? Simple enough syntax. You yeah. can use the get publisher cache folder. And then you pass in the same string. So in this case, we're passing in fonts. Yep. But that would be the same as passing in, say, like folder one or whatever name whatever you gave name to is. that subfolder. And that it gives you back, yeah. And that's right. Sorry, that gives you back a storage folder object. So you just read and write just as if it's in your local storage. No new API here. It's just a regular storage folder. Indeed. Yep. Yeah. If you want to clear it down, there again, there's a clear publisher cache folder async method. Um, or you could just leave it and the uh, the 
this folder will be cleared automatically when the last app from that publisher is uninstalled from the device, should that happen. So. Fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating. They're nice and simple. Uh, but so app-to-app yeah. -app communication, we talked about uh, kind of what we did in Windows 8.1, right, where we had it was good, right? We could definitely do URI or protocol activation, and we could reach out to another app, but we also saw the limitation of what if somebody else had used that same protocol? We saw the special case of Facebook Auth yep. where we could limit that, but that wasn't a scalable solution, but we saw that coming. And then we also have the share contract. The share contract hasn't gone anywhere. We still can use that, and then we still have that same functionality, but we introduce new stuff in Windows 10. Yeah, so the new stuff was the uh, being able to URI activate to a specific app, to send file tokens, query URI support to find out if actually the user has already installed the relevant target app, um, and then there's the, uh, um, the UI-less option with the app services as well, which we'll talk about some more another time. A lot of great tools for Visual yeah, Studio. Right. And then the publisher shared storage folder. So this is Windows 10 Preview. Uh, all the neat stuff that's coming to you as developers, all the new paradigms, really, that you can start delivering more value from your application to your end user. Visual Studio 2015 Preview is what you want to download to start implementing this, playing with it, seeing if you like it, seeing if you love it, then come back, watch another module with us later. Hi, and welcome to the Developer's Guide to Windows 10.